Next question is from MJ Kane, 1414. Adam has said he's had success with fasting to increase appetite for a bulk. Can you provide some details on this? I'm glad you picked this, Justin, because I, I posted this on my story uh, last week. Somebody asked this question, and I said, I, it sounds contradicting to do this. Yeah, fasting yeah. for bulking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And but, you're probably one of the only coaches that have even mentioned this. Right. And so this was, I had a lot of success with this. Um, what I noticed from practicing fra- fasting is – you know, man, uh, you know, you, you have the first like 12 to 16 hours. That's really hard to resist food. And then you kind of get past that. And it's like to get to 24 from 16 to 24 is not as hard as zero to to 16, in my opinion. And then after that, you'd be like, okay, I'm fine without food. And then the next day you eat for the first time and the first meal, it's kind of a small meal because you hadn't eaten for a while. But then after that, my appetite would like just, it would kick back up where I was really hungry again. What I found was when I was constantly trying to gain, right? And I felt this a lot when uh, I was competing for the shows because I was trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every off season, which means I had to increase my calorie intake. When you're putting on the amount of muscle mass that I was I was putting on for a show, you're having to constantly increase calories. The workload is going up, which so that requires more fuel. I'm building more muscle. That requires more fuel. So the calories were just creeping up, creeping up. And of course, I had many times where I'm like, oh my God, I just can't eat 5,000 calories today. I can't get 5,000 calories today. When I'd have these moments where I'd been you know, in a bulk for several weeks and just struggling to eat that much food, one of the best things that I would do to interrupt that bulk would be go on a one-day fast. And I would do this one day fast and it took me a long time to get to this place in my, in my career and training because in the past, and I know Sal and I have addressed this before, uh, you know, the young insecure me who was always trying to build and bulk, you know, the scale would go down in a day and I would freak out like, oh my God, I, I lost five pounds of muscle today because the scale went down five pounds. Once I realized that's not how the body works whatsoever, most of that is carbohydrates and water that I'm just holding and calories that's inside my body. The but- m- fasting is not going to lose three pounds of muscle off my body in one day. So once I got past all that, I started to use this as a tool in bulk just to interrupt bulking. I'd be bulking for several weeks. It'd get really difficult. I'd throw a single day fast in there, and then I'd go right back into my bulk. It was amazing. This is a great example of knowledge versus wisdom Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to fitness. Okay, Knowledge says skipping meals, not eating protein every day isn't going to be good to pack on muscle, right? If you want to pack on muscle, consistent calories, consistent protein feedings, That's what the studies show, okay? And that's true. That's exactly what the studies show. Here's where wisdom comes into play. When you coach people, when you train people, when you work with a lot of people, when you bulk or eat excess calories for long periods of time, you start to hit a wall. Mm -hmm. You start to hit a wall. You start to feel like you're- You start to force feed yourself. You don't feel good. Digestive issues start to pop up. And at which case, then it becomes more important- to focus on that aspect, not the physiological aspect, not the protein and the calories in my body, but rather the psychological aspect, palate fatigue, and my gut health, all of which can become big roadblocks to your muscle building goal. So at that point now, we're going to stop on the feeding. We're going to stop on the giving myself protein every day. And it's like, okay, I'm having trouble feeding myself. I feel like I'm force feeding myself. I need to do something to increase my appetite. I need to do something to improve my gut health. I need to to, to interrupt what's happening right now. And so I'm going to do a fast. So when you hear us talking about that, there's a lot of coaches out there. They're like, oh, go, those guys are idiots. You shouldn't fast for bulking. Okay. Yeah. If again, if you lack wisdom and you're looking at just the studies, but what Adam's talking about and what he found tremendous success coaching people and himself for, com- for competitions. And when I've worked with people who want to bulk, I found tremendous success in doing this because it becomes a real problem when you're trying to eat more calories and you, you just don't want to. You don't want to. It doesn't feel good. You got to force yourself to eat. You go ahead and stay down that path and you're going to run to bigger problems. And it doesn't, it's okay. You, you might take a micro step back by fasting for a day or two. And when I say micro, I mean literally micro. You're not losing tons of muscle. You're just not bulking like you were before. But then when you get back on track, you feel better. Appetite's back. Digestion's better. Now you're full steam ahead. Not only that, but I'll also say something. This is also controversial, but this I, I believe this. Some studies suggest that your body does become desensitized to constant 
repeated protein feedings. In other words, your body starts to use less of it for muscle and starts to turn more of it into uh, energy uh, to burn. And I believe that fasting increases the sensitivity your body has to protein just like it does uh, to carbohydrates.